A great week for British nuclear power. Now it's time to build momentum. The UK once led the world in nuclear power. Calder Hall, the world's first commercial nuclear power station, began pushing electrons into Britain's national grid in 1956. Queen Elizabeth II opened it when she was just 30 years old. It is with pride that I now open Calder Hall, Britain's first atomic power station. At its peak in the mid-90s, nuclear supplied about a quarter of the UK's electricity. Today, it supplies about 15%. There is a growing recognition amongst energy leaders, both within government and the private sector, that nuclear must play a part if we're to achieve net zero sensibly by 2050. This is great news. Public support in the UK is also quite strong. The latest YouGov poll shows 27% of the public tend to support and 22% strongly support nuclear power. Just 8% strongly oppose, making strong opposition to nuclear power actually quite a minority view. This is also great news. As such, there's a lot of talk about a nuclear renaissance in energy circles, especially on the back of the 2025 spending review, which at the time of recording happened last week. The key points were, number one, Sizewell C, a 3.2 gigawatt nuclear power station, will be built in Suffolk. And number two, and this is particularly exciting, Rolls-Royce SMR will be building the UK's first small modular reactor. With decarbonisation, energy security and the energy abundance on which society depends in mind, this is all really, really good news. I am over the moon. But... Here is a timeline stretching between 2015 and 2040. Dungeon SB, Hinkley Point B and Hunterston B all shut down recently, putting a massive dent in the UK's nuclear power capacity. From here on in, everything is just a projection and it is possible that some reactors will have their lifetimes extended beyond the planned shutdown dates. But under current plans, Hartlepool and Hesham 1 will shut down soon, followed by Torness and Hesham 2 not long after. On current projections, nuclear power capacity will actually be lower in 2035 than it was in 2020, even though two new nuclear power stations, Hinkley Point C and Sizewell C, will be online by that time. Sure, a few small modular reactors would bump us back up into the green. We don't know exactly how many are in the pipeline or where they'll go. Those plans are yet to be announced, and so... I guess we'll see what happens. Now, I don't want to single out the UK. It's roughly in line with the global picture. The International Atomic Energy Agency predicts that nuclear share in the world's electricity supply will roughly stay the same between now and 2050. Now, I don't say any of this to be ruthless or uncharitable or overly cynical. I am delighted that Sizewell C is going ahead, and I cannot wait for Rolls-Royce small modular reactors to be delivering electricity to the grid. I think all of this is the best news in a really, really long time. I say it because, and this is the understatement of the century, net zero is really, really difficult. It's going to take more than a couple of nuclear reactors, countable on one hand, to do the trick. Last week was definitely a week for celebration and lots of well-earned pats on the back. But this week, and the next, and the next, we must continue aiming upwards. We mustn't get complacent. For me, I'd love to see a French-style nuclear rollout, the kind that added about 65 gigawatts to the grid between 1970 and 1999. That such an energy transition has happened before, just across the channel and well within living memory, is a shining beacon of optimism. The technology is there, and so is the precedent. This has been done before, but it won't be easy. I'm reminded of what the Red Queen said to Alice. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. And so it goes with net zero. If you enjoyed this video, you should know that I put it on my Substack too, over at drtimgregory.substack.com. There is a link in the description, and so head on over there to subscribe. It's completely free to read, and I'll be posting on there a lot in the coming months. Until next time.